this evening I'm delighted to give a brief analysis or a brief descri description of what goes on at uh, Arnold Furness. Uh, the first slide here, with the help of Mr. Han, uh, we took a little bit of uh, translating some uh, English terms that I'll be using throughout my presentation. So we took a little bit to translate to Chinese so that uh, those of you who don't understand some technical terms that we use in Smelter will be able to follow. I would like to start my presentation by posing one question. I think everyone in here would want to ask, why should we have an Arnold Furnace in the smelting department? Or why should we have an Arnold Furnace section at a CCS? If we go back to what goes on at Converter, last time Mr. Viembo explained, I think, two important uh, parameters or two important processes. One, that's uh, slug blowing. Another one, it's uh, copper blowing. Uh, during copper blowing, you, the final product that you get is what we call blister copper. Blister copper is of an average grade of somewhere in the range of 98 to 99% copper. Now, the way the converter, not, uh, the converter furnaces are designed, you'll find that you can't produce copper that you would want to make, for example, uh, wires for electric components. Why? That copper is not yet pure. That 2% that remains in a uh, blister copper contains elements like sulfur, contains elements like uh, iron, and <coughs> other impurities. That's the reason why we're supposed to have an anode furnace when we are extracting our copper from the concentrate during the smelting process. The time I joined CCS, I think by then we only had uh, two furnaces and we are producing a blister copper by then. This time, I separated my, our section into three different sections. The first one, which is uh, the anode furnaces section, we have two operating uh, furnaces. The third one is still under construction. We have the casting wheel section. We have two. One is uh, operating this time. The second one is still under construction. Then we also uh, have a separate section which is the anode physical quality inspection assurance and weighing section that's also now under smelter the main products that are produced at our furnace or at our section is uh, basically anode, anode copper in that range of uh, percentage grade it is uh, 99.6 to 99.7 percent copper that's our average uh, for our copper we also produce what we call anode blister we, we cast them into 500 kgs. We also sell uh, anode rejects, which are 400 kg copper. Uh, the byproducts that we produce are sulfur dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. These products, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, these are produced in small amounts. And we also have uh, fluid dust. This fluid dust is as a result of uh, our cooling system, where we scrap off our dust. So this fluid dust, we recycle, we take back to converter and uh, other sections. This is uh, just a simple flowchart which I made, which will help us understand what really goes on at our section. Here is our anode furnace. Our anode furnace is equipped with uh, what we call an external burner. Why should we have an external burner in our furnace? For us to maintain copper at a certain temperature during our purification stage, we need an external source of heat inside the furnace. Why do we need uh, an external source of heat? When you go to converter, when you go to ISA, you will find that uh, the heat that is needed to keep our copper in molten form basically comes from the reactions between oxygen and iron and oxygen and sulfur and other elements in concentrate. When you come to anode furnace, a lot of sulfur and a lot of iron has already been removed at converter stage, uh, electric furnace stage, and ISA stage. So when you reach anode furnace, you find that our main feed to the furnace, which is a blister copper, it has less iron and less sulfur. So even if we introduce oxygen in our blister copper, the amount of heat that will be produced won't be enough to keep our copper in molten form and also attain that uh, temperature of copper that we want. So you find that our furnace is equipped with uh, an external burner which will supply the necessary heat to keep our copper in molten form. So this, this here is basically an illustration of our anode furnace. We have the burner here. It uses uh, oxygen, diesel and compressed air 
for combustion to the furnace. We also have an illustration here of the type of equipment that we use when we are feeding our copper to the furnace. We have uh, the compressed air, uh, this is nitrogen. We also have our solid reducing agent. In this case, uh, later on I'll explain, we feed during our reduction stage, we feed our solid uh, reducing agent, which is coal this time. Some few years ago, we used to use charcoal, but this time we are using coal. From our furnace, what we produce is flue, which goes to the flue cooling chamber, then the gas goes to the 60 meter chimney. We also have flue dust, which goes to the concentrate bin and back to, to the converter section. From the furnace, what we also produce is copper. So copper goes to this stream where we have our discasting machine, where we cast our anodes. We also have uh, rivets that we send back to converter. The rivets usually are in form of uh, rejected anodes. Maybe they are not confirming with what our clients want. And also some generated uh, uh, copper chunks from the process also take back to converter. We also have... Uh, slag which is produced during our skimming stage uh, we also take back to converter for reprocessing <coughs> the next slide uh, i just took a liberty of explaining or including some few aspects that we're supposed to consider when you want to start uh, uh, purifying our copper the planning stage involves uh, uh, teaching our operators the sops and also some of the important control parameters that are supposed to be followed organizing uh, we have issues to do with manpower. We're supposed to know which people are supposed to be there and how many. We also have our equipments. Uh, equipments goes together with uh, safety and inspection. Why should we inspect our equipments before we start operating our furnaces? For one simple reason. If you do your inspections on time, you are guaranteed of a smooth process whilst we are processing your, your copper. As I explained earlier on, uh, at our furnaces, we have the rotary anode furnace. This is basically the units that we use when we are purifying our copper. We have uh, twin casting wheels. Our processing stage or our refining stage of uh, blister copper is basically done in four stages. The first stage is what we call the feeding stage. What is involved in the feeding stage is basically the transfer of copper from uh, converter section to the anode furnace section. Our furnaces are uh, capacity load. It's about 350 tons, but with experience, and from what we've experienced so far, we have come up with a safe working load that are supposed to feed our furnace. And our loading capacity somewhere in the range of 300 to 330 tons. Anything in between or anything below 300 tons, it's okay. The average grade of blister copper that comes from converter ranges in this range. It's about 98.5. The first stage in our purification process is what we call the oxidation stage. The main element that you want to remove from copper at this stage is sulfur. This here is a very simple equation. So when we are oxidizing our copper, that sulfur that you want to remove, it's attached to the copper in form of what? Copper to sulfide. So this is our copper to sulfide. When we introduce air in the furnace, the element that will start reacting is just oxygen. What we produce is copper. This symbol here symbolizes copper in molten form and sulfur dioxide. This kaharo here symbolizes it's a gaseous state. Some of the important parameters that we do not during our oxidation stage are the furnace negative pressure. Our furnace will be set in such, that, in such a way that it will start allowing air inside. That's uh, one parameter. The second one, is what we call the oxidation temperature. This is also important. How? We're supposed to maintain this oxidation temperature at the end of oxidation stage. We're supposed to maintain it within this range. Why should we maintain our oxidation uh, temperature within this range? Anything less than uh, 1140, it will affect our process in one way or the other. The final and the most important also state uh, parameter is the dissolved sulfur in copper. Remember, Oxidation stage, what we are removing is sulfur attached to the copper, but we can't remove all the sulfur from the copper. So we also have a parameter or a certain figure to say during oxidation stage, if the sulfur content reaches this value, then we can say our oxidation process is complete. The sulfur content in our copper is what we use to determine 
at what point will the oxidation process end? How do we do so? We use what we call oxidation samples. I took a liberty of uh, putting a picture. Uh, I hope it's clear. This is our oxidation sample. I put two so that you can tell the difference. If your sample is looking like this, it simply means there is still sulfur in your copper, meaning your oxidation should continue. It looks like this. It has a depression on top. This symbolizes your end of oxidation process. The next stage is the skimming stage. Skimming stage basically is the removal of slag. Where does the slag come from? Our blister copper contains iron, contains aluminium, uh, gold, silver, and, and, and so forth. You will find that elements like iron, elements like aluminium, cashmere, they also be oxidized. When they oxidized, they form a layer on top of the copper. That layer is what we call our slag. So after oxidation, we're supposed to remove that slag through a process called skimming. We have three important reasons why slag is supposed to be removed. One, removal of slag reduces the process time. So before you even start your, your, your reduction process, remove the slag so that you shorten the process time. The second point also is bath temperature control. <laughs> How does our slag affect the temperature of our copper? That slag is uh, less dense than copper. Copper is heavy, then the slag will float on top. So when the slag is floating on top, it will form a layer. That layer will disturb the transfer of heat from our bunches on top to the copper. So remove, your copper, remove the slag from your copper and your bath temperature will be maintained uniformly throughout. The last stage, which from my experience is very critical in our copper purification process is it affects our casting process. How does it affect our casting process? If there is too much slag in the copper, during casting, that slag will start reporting to the casting wheel. The, cast, the slag to the casting wheel, we don't want slag. So we're supposed to make sure that before we start casting, supposed to remove all the slag, not 100%, but remove as much slag as possible so that it doesn't affect your casting process. The next stage is the reduction stage. This basically entails uh, the removal of approximately about 8% copper to oxide, or in short, it basically entails the removal of oxygen from the copper. If you may ask, where does the oxygen from the copper come from? The time we are doing our oxidation, we introduced air in the furnace. That air contains oxygen. Remember, that copper in copper, uh, that copper in the furnace, it's about 98% to 99%. During our, our reactions, you will find that uh, sulfur will be few compared to copper. So, whilst you're removing your copper, you're also, whilst you're removing your sulfur, you're also oxidizing your copper. That's during the oxidation stage. Now, that copper is what we want. So we can't just say, since copper is mixed with oxygen, then throw it or take it back to converter or uh, RIF. No. Why? Our reduction stage will help us remove this oxygen, which is attached to copper, so that we can have a product which is in the range of 99.6 to 99.7% copper. How do we do so? We introduce what we call a reducing agent. Basically, you find any material that will have a lot of carbon to help us remove this oxygen from your copper. In our case at uh, Chambish Copper Smelter, we use uh, crushed coal. Crushed coal contains carbon. So the basic reaction uh, for the removal of oxygen from copper is this one. So this is the copper mixed with oxygen. This carbon is in coal. So when these two react, what you, you produce is copper in molten form and carbon monoxide. Introduce more oxygen, you'll find that this copper to oxide again, will that with carbon monoxide to produce copper and carbon dioxide. The important parameters that, that we set during our reduction stage is the first one is the furnace positive pressure. Remember, during oxygen, during oxidation, I said uh, our furnace is supposed to have a negative pressure. In this case, during reduction, we set our furnace so that it has a positive pressure. 
We also note what we call the reduction temperature. This temperature is usually checked at the end of our reduction process. And we're supposed to make sure that it's within this range, 1215 to 1230. Another important parameter is the amount of oxygen in our copper. Reduction process won't ensure the removal of oxygen in copper, but we're supposed to remove our oxygen to a certain level. And the level that we have set so far is 900 ppm to 1300 ppm of dissolved oxygen. How do we know that we do this by the help of what we call a reduction sample? So these are basically two samples. One is showing you to say you still have oxygen inside. The other one is indicating to you to say this appearance, you will find that your oxygen will be in that range. This is a simple picture of our anode furnace. It was in a reduction stage. You can see the fire due to poor combustion in the, in the furnace. From the purification stage, we go now to the operation that the casting wheel. The casting wheel basically is where we cast uh, ingots of different shapes and sizes and also weights. The way the casting wheel is configured is in such a way that you can introduce different kind of molds on your casting wheel. You can also set the tonnages depending on your clients. Some clients will say we want anodes that are weighing 500 kg. Some will say we want anodes that are weighing uh, 300 kg. Some will say 350. So the casting wheel is uh, designed in such a way that those parameters can be fed in your wheel and are able to cast any ingot of any weight. Some of the parameters that we, we monitor during our casting wheel, I took a little bit of just putting a few. Uh, you find that if we were to operate the casting wheel efficiently, you find that our casting speed is supposed to be in this range of uh, 30 seconds. We also have this parameter. This is uh, on the furnace. We call it the discharge hole. Our uh, anode furnaces have a discharge hole. It's, this is the hole where uh, your copper will be coming out during your casting stage. That hole is supposed to be within this range of 50 to 60 millimeters. We also have parameters like uh, the concentration of our barrier, which from our experience we have set it to this range. This is actually the ratio of the barium to water in a 1,000 millimeter cube glass. So we have set this, that value to 350 to 400 millimeters uh, ratio to 1,000 liters of water. We also have what we call our mode temperature. Our mode temperature also affects the quality of our ingots that we cast. So we have set parameters of our mode temperature during our casting process to be within this range of 120 to 150 degrees Celsius. We also need to check our mode quality and level. This is basically a pictorial illustration of our casting wheel. Uh, this is our furnace. From the furnace, you find that the copper will go to what we call the big chute. From the big chute, it flows through the Londa to the pouring ladle. This is the pouring ladle I was talking about. From the pouring ladle, your copper will go to the casting ladle. Then from the casting ladle, it will go to your copper mouths. From the casting wheel, the next and final stage at our section is the anode quality assurance and weighing. This section initially was under laboratory department, but now it's under smelter. So you find that the way our casting wheel is designed, after we cast our anodes, you find that those anodes, they won't necessarily conform what our clients want in so many ways. Uh, for example, some shapes or some sizes will deviate from what our clients want. So we have a section where we're supposed to do a thorough analysis or inspection of our anodes. After they are inspected, then they're supposed to be weighed. Currently at uh, our section, we are casting uh, two types of anodes. We have what we call the JX and the ZJG type of anodes. The next stage, this is a pictorial illustration of how we do our anode inspection. Yes, we have taken a little bit of uh, 
uh, using a hired labor, we use contractors. This time we are using a parcel contractor. So this is how we inspect our anode. You find that you put our anodes one one on our booster stands. This is where we do our thorough inspection. This is our anode bundling and weighing machine. Depending on the type of anodes that we are producing for JX anodes, we, we do bundles of six each, then we do weighing. If it's a ZJG, we do a bunch of seven when we are weighing. So this is basically a pictorial illustration of our uh, anode bundling and weighing machine. These are basically the bundled anodes ready for handover to marketing and for dispatch. We are facing one big challenge, how the anodes that we are casting, they are not necessarily confirming or conforming to what our clients want. And that's putting a pressure on our part and also extra cost. What do I mean by extra cost? We have to hire parcel contractors just to do the inspection. If our skill of our casting can produce perfect anodes that don't require extra work before you can make bundles and uh, sell to your clients. If we can achieve that, and uh, I'm confident to do one day, currently we are almost at somewhere around uh, 19, 92, 91%, I think. If we are able, able to reach 100%, then I would say we have learned a lot and we are, we are almost there. So this is basically our biggest challenge. In conclusion, I would say collectively, uh, our anode furnace in a smelter section is basically designed to prefer our blister copper and produce anodes that will be acceptable to our clients. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? How to protect our employee from Okay, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, to answer your question, I'll take you back to this picture here. Uh, if you can remember last year, the time that accident happened, I think it was somewhere around um, March or April, I think. You'll find that uh, the grinding area was near our scale, if you can remember. And that space was too small. So this time what we have done is we have secluded that area. If you see these red lines here, this is the only part where we have allowed forklifts to access the grinding side and also the, side, the, the casting wheel side. We have also put banners or signs around the, the grinding area to show people to say, this is prohibitable. At the far end here, it's a walkway. This is the only way where people are allowed to access our grinding area. Why do we do so? Those are the only people that have been sensitized and inducted on the hazards and how to prevent such hazards from causing accidents at the, the grinding area. I would say basically what kind of robots? Is it a, a human form robot or just a machine doing the grinding? Uh, it will improve our, our grinding, yes. Uh, how? That machine will be operating with using our parameters. It's different from uh, a person using a grinding machine. So say you feed your, your machine to maximum thickness. That machine will make sure that it grinds your anode within that range. By so doing, it will also improve your quality and it will reduce on those errors that uh, humans make. So I think such machines will reduce on those errors and it will also improve our, uh, our grinding quality. What we want to remove is this sulfur from the copper, right? What we use to remove the sulfur from the copper is oxygen. So during oxidation, sorry, the pressure is supposed to be negative. If it's negative, it's sucking air from outside. And during reduction, what we're removing is oxygen. So we don't want more oxygen in the furnace. So we we'll set our pressure to negative.
so that our fans won't be allowing more air from the outside. By so doing, it won't allow more oxygen in our furnace because at that stage, what we're removing is oxygen.